All right, I am aware that I am between you and lunch, so we won't make this any longer than we need to. Uh, just wanted to update you on the DMN Technology Compatibility Kit. As Nathaniel said, it is a group to help provide, well, here's what we do. It's a way for vendors to demonstrate their compliance to the DMN standard, to provide files to help vendors to test for errors and become compliant, and for customers to assess how compliant a vendor is. So as a, as a review, quickly, what the TCK provides is a set of test cases. And what we're going to do is we're going to review those and make sure that they conform to the spec so you've got a good set of test cases. And we've got some tools for running the tests. And then for those vendors that actually run them and submit results back to us, we're going to recognize the vendors who are successful in, in running the DMN tests. The structure of it looks like this. At the bottom is what the TCK provides. And everything we provide is available for free. It's all checked into GitHub. So you can you know, download it and access it without any trouble. Um, for example, in this diagram, we're, we're, we're showing the DMN model there. On top of that is the runner. The DMN spec defines what the models are and how the model should execute, but it doesn't define the the uh, programming interface to the engine. So we have several different runners available. There's a Java runner and a JavaScript runner, and there's a couple different options. You may have to write your own runner to run the tests. And then at the top is the, is the vendor's domain. That's what the, the vendor's implementation of DMN and, you know, that, that are executing the tests. Um, so the TCK provides DMN models, and then sets of input data. Okay, so if you've got this input data, you should have these expected results. The runner submits the input data to the model, gets the result, compares the results with the expected results, and then um, the, the answer there, the result of the test, is written out as a CSV file. That CSV file then can then be given back to the TCK and it becomes part of our, uh, um, part of our web thing. Um, this is actually not implement, not hard to implement. A number of uh, vendors have done so. Uh, when Actico came and joined the group, um, they found out about us, said, hey, we want to be part of this. And about two weeks later, they had all the tests running. And they were able to supply back to us hundreds of more tests. Um, I had the same experience. Fujitsu, we implemented the, we, we used the Drools engine and uh, put the DMN into the product. And I asked one of my guys to uh, set up to run the test. So they imp he wrote a runner in about one day. And by the end of the week, you know, we had all the results. Uh, uh, and we were able to show that we're compliant. So it's not difficult to show compliance as long as your DMN en engine is uh, running correctly. This is uh, the site. We have eight participating vendors at this point in time. Uh, you can drill down on each given vendor, look at each of the different categories of tests, see how many passed, failed, and, um, and drill down to the individual test level and see what the test is about. Uh, you, can, you can get the explanatory document, you can look at the actual source of the model, source of the test. So, you know, if you want to find out what, what's actually running there, um, all of that stuff is available through the website. This is the status. Three years ago, we started. And we built up, and today, you know, we have 112 models. We have over 1,000 decisions, objects. Uh, the test files, about 105 test files, and more than 1,000 test cases. Now, that was my original goal, was to get to 1,000 test cases. The plus one over here is because of what I'm going to show on the next slide is uh, someone new who's about to join, about to sh he doesn't have results yet, but he submitted another 600 cases. So there's test cases. It's going through review. We need to review them and make sure that they're correct, but I'm expecting that we'll have 1,600 cases in a minute, in a, in a few months. So what happened this year? We moved to DMN 1.2. So last year it was DMN 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, 1.2 was voted on in June, but it, you know, it takes about nine months for the spec to go for, you know, from when it's voted to when it comes out. Um, whoops, it automatically advanced, sorry. Hopefully it won't do that again. Um, so then we had to transition as well. And uh, to transition, we took all the tests and there was a schema change. Uh, so we upgraded all the tests, all the models, the official models, to the 1.2 schema. 
and we made the decision not to support both 1.1 and 1.2. So we basically archived the 1.1 website and said, okay, if you want to know about DMN 1.1 support, there's the website, and basically snapshotted that and said, we're moving all the tests to 1.2, which we did, and then asked uh, vendors to re-implement their results for 1.2. Um, and that's, that's happened to some degree. I mean, there's eight vendors. Uh, four of them have results, and four of them don't yet have results for 1.2. So we are expecting that to come you know, in the coming months, but the status is that it takes a little while for people to switch to the new version, so it'll, it'll happen when it happens. Mentioned earlier, Doug McCreeth. He's located in Australia. He's a consultant. He found out about us in December and said, wow, this is a great thing. Well, he was working on uh, financial industry, he was working for a bank, uh, rolled off of that job and said, gee, I really would like to have a rule set that would let me do all of the things I was doing there. Found DMN, said DMN is great. He worked through the, sorry, he worked through the, I'm thinking this is the 15 seconds from the uh, Ignite, poss <laughs> possibly affecting me here, I don't know. Um, so he just works through the spec, and he's trying to figure out the spec, and he does so by writing a bunch of tests. So that, you know, from him, we've gotten about 600 new tests, and there's another 600 in, in the process, so over 1,000 tests. Um, and he ran into some interesting issues, uh, a lot around type conversions, uh, null support, you know, is null a type or is it not? How do you compare things? Uh, nested lists was, a, was a, uh, an interesting thing there. And what this highlighted was, you know, in some cases the spec had some examples that were not correct, you know. So that went into the RTF. The RTF has corrected those examples. Um, there's some other interesting cases which are really difficult. And, and this is the nature of having a, a written spec for a language. Um, I, I don't think you can, I mean, it's really hard. It's already that spec, I don't remember, it's 300 pages, I think. Um, it's already pretty detailed. but that's not as detailed as an actual running example. So that's why I wanted the TCK to provide running examples that you could, you could actually test and, and try out. Um, error handling was an issue that came up. Uh, I can talk about that in the next slide. Unicode, they had an uh, expression for, uh, show, for including Unicode values, but um, they, the spec didn't really define what the four hex digits meant, and which was strange because the Unicode characters, they allow more than four digits of Unicode characters. So um, we worked through that. Um, this is a snapshot from the current issue site. A lot of the issues are waiting on the RTF. And I'm highlighting that here because there is a bandwidth um, limitation in the RTF. The RTF is solving these on a regular basis. They're working through them, but let's face it, uh, there's only so much they can do. And so I think there's a chance to move forward in parallel here, uh, and that the TCAK could move ahead and, and make some decisions on um, that, that the RTF is too busy to handle. Okay, they're working on other things. So I think we should move forward on that. However, the, the main implementers have not yet gotten on board to that. So that's fine. Um, you know, it, it, it will take it wherever we want to take it. Uh, if we can move more quickly, uh, that would be great. But if we want to, you know, if, if we're going to put everything through the RTF bottleneck, that, that's also fine too. So we'll just see what happens. But that's kind of where I want to, to move in the future. We've got a viable test set. It works. It's out there. It, it's been proven to help people do implementation. It, it's proven to show that, uh, that they work. So we'll continue to add more tests, and maybe we can look at error handling a little bit. The spec doesn't really define error handling, and this, was, this is partially a design decision. In, in, in my mind, it's very, very important that if you hit an error condition, that you basically stop everything and report that. Um, that's one philosophical approach to handling errors. Uh, the other approach is, uh, and this is the, ch the choice that DMN, uh, the feel expression language took, is to simply return a null. And, that, and, and so if you have an error in expression, which is an input to another function or expression, the null is passed into there and then it handles the null and that may pass on a null uh, further on. And I do know that some languages work successfully that way, so I'm, you know, I'm willing to say maybe this is a, 
Maybe this is a good way to go. Um, but the spec talks about errors can be reported, but doesn't define exactly when the error should be, must be produced. Um, so it's all pretty much optimal. I mean, we added into the test cases as a way to indicate that this test will cause an error, supposed to cause an error, but we can't actually enforce that an error occurs because the spec doesn't say so. Um, so that's the situation we're in. I think it's an opportunity for the TCK to actually define the cases which should produce errors. Um, so we'll see what happens. Uh, again, this is a way of, of helping the RTF move forward because to, to get around their, band, their bandwidth problem. One thing that has happened is we've seen clearly now the separation of process from decision. That's a good thing. Um, so in, this, is, this is taking from the Fujitsu um, uh, presentations. But uh, you can call the decision directly through the REST API just in the same way that you can call the process. And that's kind of a new thing because we used to think of processes, that decisions were part of process, but now we see them as separate things that are accessible in the UI. So that's a good thing. I think we all know that. Um, of course, you can call the decision from the process, but that's kind of secondary. I'm not seeing a lot. I mean, we still do that, but, but uh, presenting it straight to the user is maybe a more viable thing. Anyway, you have both choices. I believe that standardizing the REST API to this is a possible direction for the TCK. So I'll just, you know, that's one of the things we might do. And this is a way of combining multiple models. These are decision tables, but they could be DMN models in a, in a, into a single call because I think it's important for the caller to be able to, I mean, you could just combine these decision tables into one decision model. But I think there's also a case to be made for the caller to do some composition of, of models to be able to call multiple models at once. So that's just one idea I had there. Okay, so all the tests are freely available. Anyone can join and participate in the TCK. And if you're implementing DMN, this is a significant benefit. I did want to mention there's a lot of vendors that claim DMN support. This is taken from the DM Communities site. These are all the vendors that claim to have DMN support, but only three of them have results on the TCK. There is, in fact, on this site a um, a little flag in there that can be said, do you do participate? So that's great. So you can go into here and you can find out who, who participates and who doesn't. Um, but uh, I, this is the main message I want to get out here, is that if a vendor claims to have DMN support, but they don't have results on the DMN TCK sites, you've got to ask the question why they've done that. And I, I would put forward that they don't really have DMN. They certainly don't have full support of DMN if they don't have results on the TCK site. So finally, I want to recognize the contributions of the, the, the main contributors. Red Hat, tremendous job on this whole thing. So we would not have done anything without Red Hat support, so I really want to highlight that, as well as Goldman Sachs. So um, there was Edson involved in this early on, but now it's, it's Mateo, and he's on every meeting. Um, and then we have uh, also from Goldman Sachs, every meeting. And these guys are reviewing all the cases. So it's incredibely important work. I also want to recognize Trisotech and, and Fujitsu as regular, you know, every, every meeting they show up to, so that's really important. But there's also a lot more vendors involved. Komundo has been critical to this, Actico, Open Rules, Oracle, and Bruce with Method and Style. So all of these people have made the, the thing happen. So, you know, thank you very much. You all know who you are. Um, and then from the users, I simply want to put out here the idea that if you're creating DMN models and they're valid and they're well formed and you have test cases for them, well, think of submitting them to the TCK because this, by adding them to our test suite, they will be run on every version of every engine that gets, that gets released. So it makes it very easy for a vendor to test your models and to make sure that they don't break anything in your model. So it's, it's really, you know, please, to all the users out there that are using DMN, consider submitting your models to the TCK. We'll include them in the test suite and they'll get tested on future versions of engines. So it's kind of a guarantee for future compatibility. It's not perfect. Uh, we can't really guarantee it, but it's, it's pretty good. So as a summary, the DMN TCK is a way for vendors to demonstrate their compliance. It provides files to help vendors to test errors and become compliant, and finally, for customers to assess how compliant a vendor is. That's it. Any questions? Bruce. Well, I have a, maybe a comment.
comment with a question, and, and just to give a little context as to the TCK versus the RTF and, and OMG, um, and why there's a, maybe a divergence, a possible divergence. So that what the TCK is really testing is uh, compliance with the field language, which is part of the PMN spec. But OMG, in its sort of big tent philosophy, says we've got the decision requirements diagram, and um, and we define fields and language, but you don't have to use, you know, you could use Java, you could use, you know, the ODM language, you could use the FICO language, you could use some other language. And so uh, some of these vendors that claim DMS support, well, we support the DRD. Yeah. And maybe something that looks like a decision table. Sort right. Of, but not field. Yes. And uh, so, uh, so I think there is room for the TCK to do its own thing in certain cases because you're concerned with the vendors who really implement the language in the spec feel and as opposed to the you know the RTF which has a lot of vendors who don't yeah. care that much about it. Yeah, so let me clarify that. Of course, the DMN spec allows for many different uses of DMN. So some of the tools only do the modeling, but they don't do execution. And it's definitely true, to be clear, the TCK is only looking at execution. And also, as Bruce pointed out, only level three compliance of the feel expression language. So you can do DMN and not have feel language. You can have your own language. We are focusing on feel language and interoperability. If you want to be able to write a model and move that executable from, from system to system, then the TCK is sort of giving you the, the leverage for that. Uh, but I really shouldn't present that as the only thing that DMN is, because DMN offers a whole lot of different options uh, that are available to you. And I think um, TCK could move forward in that space, but I would like to emphasize that there, it has been rigorously conformant to the actual spec. You know, if, you know, that is the guideline and we followed that assiduously and made sure that every test in there is clearly, you know, compliant with the spec. So, you know, we're not going off and doing our own thing. There's no, it's not like there's two DMNs out there. It's, it's one DMN, uh, but we are looking only at the ex executable stuff. Okay, so if that's it, I'll, we'll call an end to this and we'll all go have some lunch. So thank you very much. <laughs>